as far as I know, um, you, which is quite unusual for a rock star, you have no tattoos. No, no, I don't. Um, not yet, anyway. Um, I've been actually contemplating recently, potentially starting. I've kind of accepted the fact that uh, very recently that I'm probably not going to be buried in a Jewish cemetery anyway. Um, I actually uh, am now engaged to a non-Jewish girl anyway, half German, half Persian. There so you go. Um, I've kind of accepted that that's sort of the direction that I'm going down. And uh, so I have not tattooed my f flesh at all up until this point because there was still the possibility in my head of being able to be laid to rest with the rest of my ancestors. Mm -hmm. And that would have prohibited me from it. But uh, at this point, it's like, okay, am I really going to expect somebody to ship my remains to Israel to the burial plot and do go through all that? And then on another level, do I still even want to? So I've been kind of... It's interesting that you bring that up. I, 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 I've been actually thinking about a couple potential ones. So oh. we'll see. I, my, cool. my, my virgin skin may yet get some ink in it. We'll see. <laughs> maybe some engagement to do. Yeah, maybe. That's not a terrible idea. Mm. Not a terrible idea. Um, there is a story. Um, tell us about that bad clown experience. Which one? I've got <laughs> oh, a couple more? of them. Um, I've always had a fear of clowns since I was a little, little boy. I think I was uh, six or seven years old, and uh, my parents thought it would be nice to hire a clown for my birthday. And I had a birthday party, and the clown showed up, and um, he had one of these little miniature guillotines that you stick your finger in, and you sh shove the thing down, and it doesn't actually cut your finger off, but... I was six, seven years old. I didn't know what the hell he was doing. Yeah. And he grabs my finger and he puts it in the thing. And and so I, the minute he did that, I hit him in the nose. <laughs> and, and he started bleeding. And uh, that was the end of the party. And uh, I, that poltergeist, uh, Stephen King's It, uh, it's like, what the hell are they smiling about all the goddamn time? You know, something there's always something that just sets me off slightly with clowns. I, I, I think I've even mentioned it to, to Sean from Slipknot <laughs> once or twice. It's like, dude, that's just some scary, scary shit. <laughs> In the beginning of your guys' career, uh, you had quite some support from Jody Mayo from uh, mm -hmm. Man of War. Yeah. How's your relation now after all these oh, years of success? Haven't spoken to him since then, really. Um, we're still very happy that they are as successful as they are. It's always wonderful that in this part of the world that they still are embraced with open arms the way that they are. Um, but yeah, Joey was the very first guy to potentially offer us a record deal. Uh, he came to Chicago, uh, saw us play at a little place called Champs that we used to play on the south side of Chicago, and uh, sat us down for a nice elaborate meal the very next day to start talking shop. Um, but uh, we didn't end up going in that direction. But like I said, we still have a tremendous amount of respect for him. Since you guys play in the Western world, pretty much every place where fans are at, you do Asia as well. Um, is there a point in the career where you think, well, we got to do something very special life? Like we should play, I don't know, the Grand Canyon, or <laughs> we should play some some former Russia country, some weirdo place. It's interesting you bring that up. Uh, we, not too long ago, played Zagreb, Croatia, mm. which was interesting for us. And uh, the intensity of that show and just the ferociousness of the crowd really compelled us to consider doing an Eastern Bloc tour, former Eastern Bloc countries, uh, and and really trying to bring a little bit of the metal out there, you know, but uh, it, it, we have to find the right, or the right time. Uh, there's plenty of places we haven't been to. We, we still haven't been to South America or Mexico at all. Um, I'd love to be able to go to the Philippines. Um, and it's been my lifelong dream to be able to play in my family's homeland, to be able to play in Israel at some point. So there's a lot of other 
lofty goals that are out there that we'd definitely like to be able to achieve. But that, that should be worked out easily. You'd think. I mean, is, is it not? Mm, it's, a, it's a financial issue. Well, you know, could it be done? you can't do it. You could do it, work. but we'd lose money. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and truth be told is that we try to tour in a situation where we're no longer pulling tour support from the record label, where the, at the very least we're breaking even or making a small profit. So uh, it, it, if we can't meet our costs, there's no real justification for it just because it would make me happy. So mm -hmm. it, it really has to build out in this half of the world to the point where the promoters there feel confident enough mm -hmm. about being able to put together a show the size of which would generate enough money that would justify us coming. Mm. And that's part of the reason, you know, in all these territories, why we feel so passionately about really developing the European following. Mm. And it's been growing tremendously over the past five years, and we uh, have every intentions of continuing to come back here and continuing to cultivate it so that it mm. continues to grow. Does that scare you sometime that your following is really constantly growing from record one? Oh, well, that's not a, there's nothing scary about that. I, I, I'm, I welcome that with open arms, I, I think. We all feel that, you know, the bigger the crowd, the better. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we love uh, playing to a big audience, so... Uh, it's really just a matter of mathematics. The more bodies in the room, the more energy you're receiving, and the bigger high you end up getting. It's all about that that sort of symbiotic relationship that begins once the show starts. You channel energy into them, and they pour it right back into you. And uh, it's uh, it's overwhelming at times, but it's mathematical too. The more people doing it, the more energy you're receiving. So I welcome the growth of the audience. I welcome larger crowds and bigger audiences with every step of our career and I'm nowhere near satisfied, <laughs> not, not even close. Uh, I, I'd love for things to get to the point where that many of the great timeless rock or metal bands have been able to achieve, whether you're talking about Metallica or ACDC or anyone else. Um, we have no intentions of going anywhere. Uh, and we'll continue doing what we do, and hopefully we will eventually cross that hurdle. Excellent. Hey, what's up? This is David from Disturbed. You're watching Mulachak, the only TV you really need.